And welcome back to Trinity Baptist College Softball Complex as game two between the TBC Eagles and the Edward Waters University Tigers is ready to get underway. Edward Waters won the first game 16 to three. The game was pretty close through five innings and Edward Waters broke it open with a nine run top of the sixth and won the ball game in six innings. We're now going to get our look at Piper Young this afternoon, who was a winner on Thursday against New College of Florida. And Piper Young comes into today's play with a record of 3-7, and seven, an ERA, a very respectable 4.18. She has pitched 68 and two-thirds innings. She's allowed 69 hits, 50 runs, 41 of those earned, while walking 19 and striking out 55. Laura Scott, Katie Gooden, Chloe Sisson, the top three in the Tigers batting order. Brooke Rice, Kyla Gardner, Chloe Stefferson, followed by Mia Jordan, Jemiah Holmes, and Messiah Patterson. And first pitch misses for ball one. And we're being joined by Edward Waters University voice of the Tigers, Josh Jackson. And Josh, game two now underway. And Young delivers and misses inside. Two balls, no strikes. Piper Young, complete game, seven innings, two unearned runs against New College of Florida, and she also had a few hits and drove in some runs in that ball game as well. Yeah, New College in their first full year of competing in, in varsity uh, athletics. Of course, they get some things going, the mighty Banyans down there in the Sarasota area. They've done a good job in all their sports this season also. High pop-up, shallow center field. That's Taylor Foster unable to get the glove on it. We may have a play at second. It is not in time. That's a single for Laura Scott, actually a double, and she ends up going all the way to second. One of the shortest doubles we're going to see. Foster got a glove on it, but a very tough play. And a leadoff double for Laura Scott. And it just fell right in that perfect spot, just barely off of Foster's glove there at second. Second hit of the day for Scott. She was one for four with the run scored in game one. And Katie Gooden at the plate. No hits, but she scored three times. Also drove in a run. And she tries to bunt the first pitch and follows this one straight back. Josh, you've seen Piper Young already this season? I've seen Piper Young. Uh, just a fantastic pitcher in the circle there for Trinity Baptist. No balls and a strike to Gooden. Runner at second, nobody out. Second ball game underway, and Gooden drills one towards left, and its ball is gone. That one was crushed there by Katie Gooden. And just like in game, a very quick start here in the nightcap. It is 2-0 after two batters. And when Katie was here, she batted left-handed most of the time. A slap hitter, got a lot of singles. But when she hits right-handed, she swings the bat with a lot more authority. I mean, that's a heck of a way to make your comeback here to Trinity Baptist. Just absolutely crushed that one, a no-doubter. Her first home wall. run, and RBI is 40 and 41. Make that 42. She did have an RBI in game number one. So Chloe Sisson at the plate. She entered about midway through the first game. Batted a couple of times and pops this one up. Got it right off the handle. And Taylor Foster makes the catch. Sisson in game one was one for two with two runs driven in. She had a two-run single. I believe that was in that big sixth inning. Brooke Rice now at the plate. Rice was two for five. Three runs scored and two driven in earlier today, and she takes the first pitch for a strike. Katie hit that ball as hard as I've ever seen her hit one. I mean, that was right on the screws, Ray. Right? It's an absolute no-doubter. One strike pitch from Young, and that one misses out. So I, no, a little bit of a late call, and Young got the strike. Hyper Young, that's the 10th home run she has allowed. Two-strike pitch. Swing and just got a piece of it. Thought for a moment that might have hit off of Wells' glove, but she fouled it off. Might have actually been a break for the Eagles that she did foul it because that ball got away from Wells and runner could have made it beating the throw. 
We have one out in case you're just joining us. A leadoff bloop double by Laura Scott and a two-run homer from Katie Gooden. Chloe Sisson popped up, and that's where we stand so far. That one pulled hard and foul. Joshua Piper is on. She is really on. Absolutely. I mean, she she can definitely be a dominant, dominant pitcher. Fortunately, after she can able to get you either with, with 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 some power pitchers, able to make you know some pitches be very deceptive there for you. Remember, she took your very hard hitting team last year into the tenth inning and yeah. allowed just two runs. That ball is smoked foul. And that team you had last year, I think you were something like forty two and seven, right around there, give or take a little. Yep, forty three and seven. Hey, I was only one off. <laughs> All right. I didn't count yeah. one of the wins against us. <laughs> 43 wins was the most of school history. I'm not counting that one, that extra inning game. We had <laughs> it won, if not for Kyla Gardner and Wright. She made not only that diving catch in the ninth, but, man, did she run down. I remember she also came in and made a sliding catch and ran them down into gaps. Of course, Tiger fans know her. She had a very memorable home run in last year's SIC championship game over Tuskegee, which ended up being the game winner. Two strike pitch. Popped up down the left field line. Carlin Payne makes the catch. And Carlin made some great catches in game number one also, and she does it again. And hopefully this time the Eagles will keep hitting the ball and find some holes when they come to bat. This brings up Kyla Gardner, and I like Kyla, but we've kind of seen enough of her already today. Three for four, six RBIs, including a three-run first-inning home run. Swings and misses at the first pitch. Gardner with her fourth homer of the season. And now with 43 RBIs. Now I look at these numbers, and I have to remind myself, you guys have played a lot of games. I'm looking at you know 39 RBIs, and we played 23 games. Imagine that kind of stat. Yeah, we play a lot of games this year. And speaking with the coaches just before this game started, they still feel there's a, there's a lot of still quality softball that this team has left to play here uh, this year. There's still a lot of things left in the tank that they can do as far as getting back to that championship level. Two balls and a strike to Gardner. Takes that one on the inside corner. and looks like it took Young a little bit of time to get in the groove, but she's starting to throw the ball the way she usually does. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two runs in. Josh bet the twos tonight. And that one is up and away. That's ball three. Now, you told me you're pulling for Purdue tonight. I did pick Purdue in a pool to, uh, to win the uh, national championship tonight. So we'll see if, that, if, if my prediction comes true here tonight against a very tough UConn squad. Well, I'm predicting UConn to win it. There's a high drive. That's going to stay in play for Magatha. And she makes the catch, and that ends the inning. A two-run homer from Katie Gooden. And Edward Waters leads 2-0. We'll keep it right here, and we'll give you the batting order for Trinity Baptist. Leading off will be the catcher, Morgan Woods. Wells, you know. And I've known Morgan for only four years, you know, and <laughs> called her volleyball and softball games. I wrote down Woods. It I, happens. We had catches. Morgan Woods here at Trinity Christian Academy for many years and TBC. Kayla Saunders. I'm just messing everything up here. It, it's a rush between games to get everything reset. All right, let me try this again. Too bad there's no edit feature. Morgan Wells, a catcher, will lead things off. Taylor Foster will bat second. She's at second base. Piper Young, the pitcher, will bat third. Cleanup hitter is Sage Butler. She's playing first. Ebony Medina is batting fifth, playing short. Ashley Shaw, the catcher, center fielder, rather, playing, uh, batting sixth. Carlin Payne is in left. She's wearing number 15 and batting seventh. Batting eighth is the right fielder, Ellery Magatha. And Kylie Duhigg is playing third base here in game two. And, Josh, I should have let you do it. It happens. <laughs> as, as broadcasters, we, it, th things like these, that, like these happen. So. I love Don't it, though, <laughs> when the MLB, who's been doing it for many years, I love it when they make the same mistakes I do. I don't feel as bad. Brad Waters, JoJo Peterson is in the circle for the Lady Tigers, the team leader, ERA 2.74 ERA. She is making her 24th appearance on the year. She started uh, 20, uh, 21 games now. She currently has 23, excuse me, 84 strikeouts to lead the way for Everwaters this year. 
in 138 innings pitched. This past Friday, she pitched a perfect game, uh, pitched a no hitter, excuse me, in the nine nothing game, no game one win over Benedict. Man, congratulations! Friday. I hadn't heard about that yet. First pitch, fastball, low to Morgan Wells. She scored a run in game number one. 0 for 3, but reached on an error and scored. And she takes this one upstairs for ball two. Quickly defensively for Edward Waters from left to right. It is Jemiah Holmes in, in left and center Messiah Patterson. In right is Kyla Gardner. The infield is going to be Chloe Sisson. At third as that pitch goes outside. At short, it's Katie Good. And at second, Maya Jordan. At first, Chloe Stepperson. The battery is going to be the pitcher. It's going to be the pitcher in JoJo Peterson and the catcher in Brooke Rice. Morgan Wells now batting 292. She has homered and tripled once each and doubled a couple of times this season. And she takes a 3 0 fastball right down the middle, taking that one all the way. And Peterson is throwing some BBs. Yeah, she's definitely our power pitcher for Edward Waters. 13 and 6 on the year, just a dominant pitcher. Reigning SIEC Conference Tournament Player of the Year from last year, a first team all conference selection last season. I thought for sure we were going to see Milani Sablon. That's ball four, and Wells opens up the ball game with a walk. Brings up Taylor Foster, the Eagles' second baseman. Game number one, she hit a couple balls right on the butt and only to have them caught, as a lot of the Eagles did. So 0 for 3. But as we said earlier, it doesn't really tell the story of how well TBC hit the ball in that game. Wells at first. She's 6 for 10. She's on the move, and she will get there without a throw. That's her seventh stolen base, and Wells is in scoring position. Now, TBC came back with two in the bottom of the first earlier after Edward Waters put five on the board, and we're going to see if they can do it again. Wells, good speed, now at second. Foster ahead in the count, one ball, no strikes. Peterson delivers, and Foster gets down the bunt. Wells had to hold for a moment, but she'll take third. The throw is blocked by Gooden, covering third, keeping Wells right there. A successful sacrifice bunt from Foster. 1-3 on the putout. And Piper Young, a chance to drive in the run. She has done that 13 times. She does have a home run, and she's batting 242. In game one, she did score a run. 0 for 3 officially in the first pitch. High fly ball, and this one is out of play. Piper Young will go to the right side. She finds a lot of base hits the other way. They're playing her that way. She has all the room she wants in left center. When you get someone throwing as hard as Peterson, it can be hard to pull the ball. Wells at third. One strike, one out, and the pitch. There's a drive. Well hit towards center. Wells will tag. The ball is caught. Here comes Wells on a very good throw to the plate. A little bit late. And she's going to make sure she touched the plate. TBC had a runner called out for missing a base in game number one. So Wells very alertly goes back and tags the plate, and it is two to one. Sacrifice fly for Piper Young and her 14th RBI. And Young hit that ball very hard, and another one caught. This time the center fielder. Josh, who's out there in center? That's Messiah Patterson, the true freshman out there in center for Edward Waters. That rank of the ever-dangerous Sage Butler. Butler went three for three in game one with a home run, a single, and a double. They're in game one for Trinity Baptist. So, of course, it really wouldn't count, but if she was able to triple in this game, we'll, we'll say the doubleheader cycle. Butler came actually very close to two home runs because she put that double right off the top of the fence in the first inning. And she takes a big rip, and I think she got a piece of Medina in the on-deck circle. And Medina's <laughs> all right. <laughs> One 
ball, one strike, two outs. One run is in, the bases are empty, and fortunately, Edmund Medina, okay. And as hard as Butler hits the ball, you don't want to be that close. Counts one and one to Butler. Good change of pace. And Josh, that's not fair. As hard as she throws to drop that one in on her. Yeah, that off-speed pitch can be very, very nasty from Jojo Peterson, one of the best to throw it in the country. So ball and two strikes. Tries to do it again, but this one was a little low. Good recognition by Butler. Thing is, if anyone's expecting that change and gets the fastball, no chance at all. Two balls, two strikes. Lights are on, but not really taking much effect now. And Butler out in front of this one, a change up. Might have had the distance, but pulled foul. Counts two and two. Two balls, two strikes, and a pitch. Got her swinging. Eagles get a run without a hit. The leadoff walk scores, and after one, it's 2-1 Edward Waters. We'll be back in just a moment. After one, it is 2-1, Edward Waters. They will have Chloe Stefferson. Josh, is it Mia or Maya Jordan? Maya, Maya, Maya Jordan. Jordan and Jemiah Holmes, followed by Messiah Patterson, should the end continue. We had to take care of checking things over, make sure we had some stuff in the correct places. And strike one from Piper Young to Chloe Stefferson. Our first look at her today. She did not play in game number one. One ball, one strike. Stefferson hitting 250, eight out of 32. She's driven in four. The one one from Young is high fly ball, left field, foul territory. Payne couldn't quite get there. Looked like Payne might have overran that and tried to readjust. And that ball just eluded her glove. Fortunately for the Eagles, that was a foul ball, so it's one and two. That ball just carried a little farther than we thought off the bat. Young ready with the one, two. A little tapper right off the handle. Backhanded by Young, throw to first in time. Piper fields her position very well. Couple updates from the JV games. Edward Waters and Trinity Baptist playing. Edward Waters won both J uh, con JV contests today against Trinity Baptist. 10-9 in game one and 8-5 in game two. Well, we do have a couple of wins against you this year in the JV. We played, uh, what, six games now? Yeah, we played a good chunk of games on the JV side. And most of them are pretty close. Yep. So you had a 10-3 win, but most of them something around 10-8, give or take. And TBC JV, there's some talent on that JV team, and – they should be making the rise up in the next couple of years. A ball and a strike. We have Maya Jordan at the plate. First time we've seen her today. 167. She has driven in a couple of runs. And a high pop-up right over our heads and out of play. Jordan, a true freshman from right here in Jacksonville, playing her high school softball over at Paxton School for the Advanced Studies. One ball, two strikes. 
Always good to see the local products stay in the city to play their college ball. The one, two. Young with the change up and Jordan cue ball right off the end of the bat. Count remains one, two. This Piper Young is a local product just outside of Jacksonville. Here comes a one, two. Got her with this change up. Not really the slow, but she took enough off the fastball to get the swinging strike. And there are two outs. Jemiah Holmes at the plate, the Tigers left fielder, and another new Tiger in the lineup for game number two. 222 is her average, four RBIs, and she takes the first pitch outside. This is start number 11 for Holmes, game number 21. The 1-0, and a swing and a foul straight back. Tigers looking for the sweep after winning game one, 16-3. And Trinity Baptist trying to get the split. Holmes got a couple of at-bats against Benedict, one for two. You swept that series against Benedict. That was a conference series. And a strike right at the knees. I think uh, Young might have gotten a break on that one. Looked a little bit low from here. Ball and two strikes. And Young ready with the one-two. Got her swinging. Went down low, then climbed the ladder. And Piper Young, a one-two-three, top of the second. It's 2-1 as the Eagles come to bat in the bottom half. We'll be right back. Bottom of the second, 2-1 Tigers, all three runs in the first inning. TBC got their run without a hit, facing JoJo Peterson, who Josh says is one of the top-rated pitchers in Division II. And first pitch fastball is upstairs. Medina at the plate, like many of the Eagles, hit the ball pretty well, but nothing to show for it in the opener. Cheyenne Curry went the distance for the win. Three runs, two earned. And a fastball misses low. Two balls, no strikes. That missed. That didn't miss by much. That may have just looked, looked like it may have just grazed the zone, but umpire thought otherwise. 2-0. Peterson takes a long look, now ready in the pitch. Drops down the bunt. Medina can run. Peterson can throw, though, and she gets the out at first. Fantastic job of defense there as Chloe Severson crashes, Severson crashes toward the plate. My Jordan goes from second, covers over at first. Peterson throws a strike over to Jordan to get the out. Both these teams have a lot of speed, and that bunt's down. The fielders have to hurry, and they have to make sure they get the throw off on target. Ashley Shaw at the plate. We thought she might have had a home run in game one. The ball was caught right at the fence by Caitlin Lemug in left center. First pitch misses down low. Caitlin Lemug not in game two, and I'm not complaining. I like watching her play, but man, does she rob us of hits all the time. And a fastball in there for a strike. Yeah, her and Jasmine are seniors this year, so you don't have to worry about seeing those skills too again. Well, that's the only way we want to see our players leave our Absolutely. schools is graduation. Absolutely. Absolutely. JoJo Peterson from Sandalwood High School right here 
in Jacksonville. I have a good friend who teaches biology there, Joe Corsano. Two balls and a strike. I don't know if JoJo was in his class, but that's a pretty big school. 2-1, one, one out, base is empty. High fly ball from Shaw, left field, but it's going to stay in play. And the catch is made by Jemiah Holmes. Shaw again bidding for a home run. A little cooler air, a little bit thicker, might have hindered that ball a little bit. And there are two outs. Brings up Carlin Payne, the left fielder. Game number one, Payne, nothing out of two. Peterson's first pitch is a fastball upstairs. Peterson 13 and 6 on the season. ERA of 274. And in the conference you play in, that is very good. There's some hitters in that conference. And a strike called on the inside corner. Coming into today, she is actually second in the conference in ERA. Well, if she wasn't playing us, I would hope that it goes down. Swing and a miss. One ball, two strikes. She has given up one earned run. That was a really good fastball right by the hitter. Ball had a little bit of rise to it as well. Yeah, the ball definitely does have some movement on it. One, two, change up and Payne able to just poke it foul. Trying to fool her again with that off-speed pitch. You know, that came close to looking like a potential bunt, but she did snap the wrists a little bit. Of course, two-strike bunt foul is strike three. Josh, you want to talk about a good pitcher, Allison Benning at UNF. I got to do her game Saturday. She won the Atlantic Sun Conference Pitcher of the Week and Player of the Week. Wow. She is number four in Division One, number four rated two-way player. She hit two home runs in the series and got a win. She, she didn't pitch the shutout. That was Hallie Aarons, but she got the win in game one of that doubleheader, and that was against Kennesaw State. As this one misses up in a way, but Allison Benning really getting it done. Transferred from Oregon this season. There's some good softball here in Jacksonville. Ospreys, I think they're 24 and 12 now. Payoff pitch, two outs. Payne with the blooper towards center. This ball's going to be on the ground. Payne can run. She's on her way to second with a two out double. Carlin Payne, normally a slap hitter, but she stayed in the box this time and really put a good swing on it. Sire Patterson trying to come over and make a tremendous diving catch. I thought catch. she was going to get it. Just got out of her outstretched glove, got down for Payne to get a double. That is the first double of the season for Carlin Payne, first extra base hit of any kind, and she hit that ball pretty sharply. It carried much further than I thought off the bat. Here's Ellery Magatha. First pitch, good fastball. I'm glad I wasn't in the box. Yeah, that was an angry fastball there from JoJo. Gath is our leading hitter at 319, 0 for 2 in game one. She started the day at 355. One strike pitch, dips a little bit low. And with two outs, Payne won't have to see if the ball's caught, so a well-hit ball to the outfield should score the run. Gatha has driven in six. A ball and a strike. And Peterson held on to that one a little too long. We've seen her pitch in this circle before. Not the first time she has thrown BBs to the Eagles. She is throwing hard. Two balls and a strike. And that one a little bit low. Kylie Duhigg waits on deck. Peterson hoping to worry about Duhigg next inning. Three balls and a strike. Yeah. 
Good fastball. Swung on and missed, and now the count is full. It's starting to get a little bit darker. The light's taking a little bit better effect. We've had some 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock doubleheaders. I'm used to getting home earlier. A little bit later tonight, though. And a payoff pitch. Strike three called on the outside corner. Magatha disagreed, but that ends the inning. The Eagles get a two-out double from Carlin Payne, but nothing more. It's two to one after two. Top of the third, first pitch from Piper Young to Messiah Patterson is down low. Patterson, her first at-bat of the game, did not play in game number one. She's hitting 385, 13 RBIs, and she swings and misses. And a ball and a strike. Piper Young, two innings, two runs both earned. They came on the home run from Katie Gooden, her first of the season. And a 1-1. One, one. Change up, misses down low. Kylie Duhig charging in hard from third base. Butler from first and Foster covering. It's one and two. Swing and a miss. Patterson down on strikes to start the third. Piper Young has now struck out three in a row. Brings up the top of the order, Laura Scott at the plate. She got that blue double in the center and then scored on the home run. And the first pitch fastball is upstairs. Josh, I was looking at Patterson's numbers before that at bat, 385 and an OPS of 976. Oh, yeah, she, she's definitely really come into her own in her freshman year. And I'm glad we don't have her on the base pass. She is perfect in 23 attempts. Yes, she is. Right at the plate, even better on the base pass. Piper Young got two good change-ups to get Patterson, and now two balls, no strikes to Scott, and the pitch. High fast ball right at the top of the zone, and it's 2-1. Two balls and a strike. Young ready, and the pitch. And this one is fouled off, and Piper Young still going old school using the a brace on the arm. I saw the pitchers at the UNF baseball game. They're wearing smart watches out there on the mound. It's amazing the technology that's, come, that's you. come on the scene. I the see yours years. on there. It's too small. I can't even read that. <laughs> High fly ball to right field. McGatha coming in and makes a catch. Two outs, bases empty for Katie Gooden, who put one over the left field fence her first time up. A two-run homer. First one that I've seen her hit, and first one of the season. And we saw her play here for two years, and then transfer away, and a strike. Hated to see Katie leave TBC, but you can't blame anybody for taking advantage of an opportunity. Change up in there for a strike. We certainly wish Katie well. It's her senior year. Swing and a miss. Young, a change up and then a fastball and a head in the count, nothing in two. Coming into today, Katie actually leads the SIEC in doubles on the year. 
Two strike pitch. Pokes that one into center. Ashley Shaw makes the catch. And a second straight one, two, three inning for Piper Young. We go to the bottom of the third. Edward Waters, two, TBC, one. Eagles come to bat in the bottom of the second, or third rather, trailing 3-1. And due up will be Duhig, Wells, and Foster. Kylie Duhig, one for two in game one. One of four hits. She got a bloop double down the left field line. And as we said, might have found the secret. As hard as we've hit the ball in the first game and only four hits, but Duhig, a blooper that dropped in. And a pitch. There's a high fly ball. Deep left field. Got a chance. It's off the wall. Hit off the glove of Holmes, and Duhig is aboard. Well, we go from looking into the sun to looking into the lights. Holmes got a little twisted on that one. The ball kind of knuckled on her. I'm going to give that a two-base hit for Kylie Duhigg. And Morgan Wells, chance to drive into potential game-tying run. Hit number two for TBC. Wells showing bunt and takes the first pitch for a strike. There's one of those angry fastballs again from JoJo. Man, can she throw hard. Strike and the pitch. Wells pops the bunt up and the catch will be made. That is Chloe Stefferson. Good job. She was coming in and had to turn around suddenly to make the catch. Wells lunged for it, and that's not the way you want to bunt it. That's a great defensive play there for Chloe Stefferson. Able to go there, make the adjustment, just get enough there in time to make the out. Foster at the plate. Sacrifice bunter first time, so no official at bat. Runner at second, one out. And a strike at the top of the zone. Foster bunted the ball, and a really good play by Peterson coming off the mound, charging in and made the throw. Foster wanted time, didn't get it, and pops this one up. And the catch should be made, and it is by Holmes. And there are two away. See JoJo making some adjustments there at the slab there in at the in the circle. Why aren't you having some issues with some footing there? Piper Young drove in the run in the first with a sacrifice fly into center. Her 14th RBI of the season. First pitch is a fastball it tailed inside. One ball, no strikes. Duhigg hit the ball to the fence. She's at second, but now two outs. And time called. Everybody ready? Young looking to tie the ball game with a base hit. Takes a pitch outside corner, and he counts one and one. Left fielder Holmes playing close to the line, straight away in center. Fairly close, not excessive in right. That's Kyla Gardner. 
There's a little blooper that's going to be caught by the second baseman, Maya Jordan, to end the inning. A leadoff double, but nothing else for TBC. And after three, it's 2-1 Edward Waters. Very fast-paced ball game here in number two tonight as Edward Waters leads two to one. Piper Young throws one warm-up pitch. She is ready to go. Three innings, two runs, both earned. Two hits, and she has struck out three. And a first pitch fastball for a strike to Chloe Sisson, who popped up to the second baseman her first time. One strike pitch is fouled off. This isn't another true freshman for Edward Waters out of Umatilla, Florida. Umatilla High. That's a fun name to say, Umatilla. <laughs> Chloe with a little unusual spelling to her first name, K-L-O-E. And she lunged for that one, and Josh, get your glove ready. Stays in play, does not hit the net. And Morgan Wells makes the catch. First, I thought that ball was over the net. Then I thought it was going to hit. And Wells made a really nice play. One out for Brooke Rice, who flew to left her first time. And Young ready, and the pitch. A little bit low. Rice leading to the SIAC and RBIs with 46 on the year. That's a lot. One ball, no strikes. And that one is upstairs. Counts 2-0. A lot of room on the ground up the middle. And that one misses low and inside. Like Piper tried to rush that pitch a little. Three balls, no strikes, one out, base is empty. Kyla Gardner on deck, followed by Chloe Stefferson. Here's a 3 0. And ball four is a little high. Rice is aboard with a one out walk. First walk issued by Young. Don't want to give this team free bases or extra outs. Kyla Gardner flew out to right her first time. Had a hard time getting her out today. And a strike on the outside corner. Wells ready to fire. Let's run her back in time. No balls and a strike. And a fastball misses up and away. Now, even at 1-1. Josh, you got Clark Atlanta coming up next, a conference series. What do you expect to see from Clark? Hopefully see some more dominance from Edward Waters. Edward Waters has had some great success against the Lady Panthers over the years, and it's definitely always an entertaining series between Edward Waters and Clark Atlanta, a critical East Division race, though, East Division uh, Series, I should say, there between Edward Waters and Clark Atlanta. Again, Edward Waters sitting second in the SIEC's Eastern Division, right behind Fort Valley State. They're sandwiched between Fort Valley State and Albany State. Mentioned in the top of the broadcast, or top of uh, the contest, last this last contest, that Edward Waters had to make up a couple of games. Those two make-up games will be played on April 24th against Albany State up in Albany. And again, uh, they'll come back for one more home game on April 25th 
against Fort Valley State. High fly ball to right field. Magatha near the line, makes the catch. Runners tagging, the throw to second. It is in time. That is Rice trying to go first to second, and Ellery Magatha with a running catch and a perfect throw for the inning ending double play, a walk, and nobody left. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It's 2-1 Tigers. Eagles come to bat, trailing 2-1 to one in the bottom of the fourth. And, Josh, a terrific play by Ellery Magatha. They had to wait to make sure Ebony Medina held on to the ball. Magatha made the catch on the run and had to turn around. Rice, recognizing that it would be a tough play, took a perfect throw together. Sometimes the other team just beats you. And sometimes in this case, you just got to tip your cap to Ellery Magatha for making that play, able to get the catch and see the head, make the heads-up play over to Medina to get the double play. Sage Butler takes the change up a little high. She was out on strikes her first time up. Had the big game one. Home run, a two-run double. And then another base hit. Here's a 1-0. And that one right off the fists. And an easy play for Peterson. Well, JoJo's had Sage's number after Sage had a really good first game. Ebony Medina at the plate. She did hold on to the ball, and that was the reason for a slight delay in making the call. Empire did the right thing. You have to make sure of it. Of course, no replay review at this level. Peterson ready with the first pitch to Medina, and that one slipped out of her fingertips. Actually hit the umpire. Now that's why they wear all that equipment. I played catcher five games, and I can tell you, without those masks, nobody's catching. You realize, Josh, I'm sure you know, when baseball was first invented, they didn't have catcher's masks. Yeah. I don't know how they did it back in the day. They grew them a little tougher back in the day, I guess. One ball, no strike pitch, misses outside for ball two. You think back then, they didn't even wear batting helmets until the 60s. Two balls, no strikes. Peterson with the pitch. And a good fastball at the knees. Good take by Medina. There wasn't much she could have done with that one. One out, base is empty. Eagles trail two to one. We have a pitcher's duel going on. The difference is Katie Gooden, a two-run homer. And a fastball misses high. That's ball three. After Medina, Ashley Shaw, then Payne. Three balls and a strike. Long look by Peterson, now the pitch. Ball four, puts the potential tying run on base. Good at bat from Ebony Medina. A couple of those pitches were pretty close. Ashley Shaw, twice today, once earlier, once in this game, had a ball caught at the warning track. She's had some good swings at both pitchers today. Medina, pretty good speed at first. She is five for five in stolen base attempts. Eagles don't run a tremendous amount, but they're usually successful when they do. 
on the season as a team. 55 for 65. Medina is going to throw. It is not in time. A little bit high, and Medina got in under the tag. If Wrights puts that one more on target, it might have been a different outcome. Got down there quickly, but the high throw allowed Medina to get in safely. Stolen base number six. And now tying run in scoring position. Pitch was a strike. Shaw tried to bunt and popped it up, and that's twice. The Eagles have popped up potential sacrifice bunts. That could have been a little dangerous there between Brooke Rice catching it and Chloe Sisson coming in from third, but luckily able to come away unscathed, and there's the second out of the big out there for Edward Waters defensively. Yeah, both times the Eagles have been punching at the ball. You just want to let the ball hit the bat and drop to the ground. Carlin Payne got the double last time up. Stranded at second base, however. Medina at second. She walked, and the first pitch is high. First walk allowed by Peterson. She has struck out two, the only two strikeouts of the day for TBC batters. One ball, no strikes. Payne put a charge into one her last time up. And this one is in the dirt and a good block by Rice. All the catchers we've seen today, Josh, they blocked the ball very well. Oh, without question, especially Brooke Rice. She's definitely one of the best there in the SIAC with what she's been able to do behind the plate. I keep year. thinking you're going to say SEC. <laughs> Not there yet. Not there yet. And that one misses up and in. Peterson starting to get a little bit wild here. Hopefully she's able to calm some things down here. It's, it's a 3 0 count here to Payne. I'm expecting Payne to take this pitch no matter what. Two outs, runner at second, and she does take the strike, and Peterson hit her spot perfectly. Now three and one. I'd like to see Carlin stay back again and try to drive one like she did her last time. Peterson ready, here's a three one. And swing and a foul back. Count is full. Now Peterson one strike away from stranding that Runner at second base. The one out walk in the steal, and now two outs. Here's a 3 2 from Peterson. That is ball four. Runner takes off for third, and a stolen base for Medina. Josh, they seem to forget about her at second base. Runners now at the corners. There are two out. She surprised me by taking off in that situation also. Ellery McGath is next up after the conference on the mound. McGatha called out on strikes her first time, but she has a tying run at third. There are two outs. Still just the one run ball game here. You gotta admire the fight here from Trinity Baptist after getting run ruled in game number one. They've come to play here in game two. They get pumped up very well when Piper Young is in her groove. And after that home run, Piper has found her groove. And we're hoping, of course, that she keeps it that way. Tying run at third. And the pitch to McGatho. Line drive in the right field. A base hit. Medina scores. Here comes Payne. They're going to wave her in. The throw to the plate will not be made. The throw to third is not in time. That's a two-run triple for Ellery McGatha, and TBC has its first lead of the day. There's just some issues out there on right field getting the ball in. They allowed two runners to score, and Trinity Bantis has come all the way back now to take a one-run lead here in the bottom of the fourth. Ellery McGatha gives Trinity Baptist a 3-2 lead, and Kylie Duhigg is at the plate with a runner at third and two outs. And a fastball misses up and away. And finally, the Eagles have found a hole. Looked for a moment like Jordan was going to make the play. 
the ball didn't quite take the hop that Jordan might have been expecting. Here's a 1-0. High pop foul, and this one is out of play. We were saying that the Eagles, they get pumped up a little with Piper Young on the mound, and Ellery McGatha just pumped her team up some more. Of course, don't rest on this, because we know how well the Tigers can hit. Here's a 1-1. One -one. Change up. And taken. That wasn't the pitch that Duhigg wanted to hit, so she let it go. Now yeah, we just caught the top of the zone to get strike two there. Never really know what Peterson's going to throw. Here's a one-two. Fast ball, and Duhigg was ready for it, and out in front. That yeah, one goes over on the football field. I don't know if Coach Dorman is going to like that going on his field. Coach Verlin Dormany, 31 years wow. as a Trinity Christian Academy head coach. And we got to the state semifinal, but we played one of the best teams in the country in Clearwater Central Catholic. They beat us 38 to 31. The CCC has always had, for years, have had a very tough football team. Yeah, but then they had to they had to play Chaminade Madonna yeah. in the final. It was 52 to nothing. Oof. Makes me glad we didn't play that game. Oh, I actually Just thought that was a strike missed. myself. Wow. wow. I, I could not have argued with that. Three balls, two strikes. Of course, you have some loyal fans here in attendance cheering on the Tigers. Trinity Baptist, well represented. Here comes a 3 2. And Duhigg got out in front of it and pulled it foul. Trinity Baptist leads 3-2. The two-run triple from Ellery Magatha scored Ebony Medina and Carlin Payne. Both walked their way aboard. Eagles have only three hits, but a couple of walks have come in to score. In fact, all three runs reached on a walk. And this one is popped up and out of play. A good battle by Duhigg and Peterson. Looking ahead to the fifth, it'll be Stefferson, Jordan, and Holmes for Edward Waters. Edward Waters has won every meeting ever played between these two teams. Here's a 3-2. Duhigg waits back on this one in good recognition, and it's out of play. Duhigg absolutely battling there in the, at the plate for Trinity Baptist. Well, if nothing else, she's making Peterson work and throw some extra pitches. Three balls, two strikes. Runner at third. There are two out. Duhigg with a ground ball to third. Bobbled, but the throw is in time. Staying with that is Chloe Sisson. Didn't panic and made a good, strong throw. TBC gets a pair of walks and a triple. Scores two, and after four, it's 3-2 Eagles. TBC Eagles have taken the lead 3-2. First lead they've had today, and Piper Young has allowed two runs, both earned through the first four innings. She has allowed just a couple of hits. She has walked one and struck out three. And now here to take over in the top of the fifth, the voice of the Tigers, Josh Jackson. Thanks a lot, Ray. Six, seven, eight, due up here for Edward Walker. Chloe Stepperson, Maya Jordan, and Jemiah Holmes due up here. For the Lady Tigers of EWU. Chloe Stepperson at the plate. First baseman for Edward Waters, the true freshman from Jacksonville, Baldwin Junior Senior High School. The first pitch from Piper Young comes inside for a ball. Baldwin, Baker County, the teams in that area, very good softball programs. The 1 0 swung on, hit foul. Down even at a ball and a strike. Very 
important day in baseball history there, Ray, as today is April 8th, April you're 8th, right. 2024. Not Hammer just the Eclipse, Hank. but this is the 50th anniversary. And it's too bad that Hank Aaron didn't live long enough to see this 50th anniversary. Yeah. Tonight, the Braves are doing a ceremony up in Atlanta as they take on the Mets. They lead 2-0 now, but 50th anniversary of Hammer and Hank hitting home run number 715 as that pitch goes just outside. Count now three balls and a strike. Al Downing, if he's going to be remembered for something, that's probably not what he wanted to be remembered for, but Al Downing served up the pitch. Tom House, a Braves reliever, caught the ball in the bullpen. Ball goes I, outside. I hope they got the ball to Hank Aaron after Tom House caught it. You know, people today, they'd be selling it. Three balls, two strikes. Here's the 3-2. That one's up and this is upstairs, and he has a leadoff walk for Chloe Stefferson. And you don't want to give this team free bases because this team will take advantage of it. Maya Jordan is scheduled to hit. She may be called back, however. Jordan's going to come to the plate, so they're going to make a change at first as far as who's going to be a courtesy runner here for Chloe Stepson to try to get the speed there on the base paths. Lead off walk. TBC's three runs all reached via the walk. And many times it's the walks that will do in a pitcher. They're going to give up the hits, but they need to get the ball in the strike zone. Jade Minchin will be the courtesy runner for, runner for Edward Waters there, replacing Chloe Stefferson. Maya Jordan at the dish now for EWU. Lady Tigers down by one here in the top of the fifth. Jordan, or excuse me, that Minchin goes, a bun attempt goes foul for Jordan. And that's another one that we've seen where the bunter is pushing at the ball rather than just letting the ball hit the bat. It's been a bit of an issue there for Edward Waters being able to get quality bunts down. I know that's something that the coaches have really worked with the ladies here at this year to try to get better at that. The 0-1, runner goes. Cowboys was up, throw down to second, is not in time, and there's a runner in scoring position there for Edward Waters. That was a close play, but the hop got up above Mention, and she was able to get the foot down in time. That was a pretty good throw by Wells. Down even at a ball and a strike to Maya Jordan in the Edward Waters second baseman. There's the 1-1. One, one. There's a strike call. Count goes now to one ball and two strikes. Now a tough play for Ebony Medina, the shortstop. She has to make sure first to field any potential bunt and then cover third in case Mention takes off. Young comes said, here's the one-two pitch. This is inside. Count is even now at two balls and two strikes. Waters trying to capitalize on a leadoff walk to Coley Stefferson. Jade mentioned the courtesy runner now at second there as was over stolen the base a few moments ago. The 2-2 to Jordan. Swung on and missed. And down goes Maya Jordan. A big out there for Piper Young. Big pitch by Young. Took a little something. Looked like a fastball coming in, but didn't quite get there in time. And Jordan a little bit out in front. Tamaya Holmes went down on strikes her first time. There's the left fielder. First pitch from Young. So there's the bunt, misses outside. One ball and no strikes. And this is the player we were talking about with the 900 OPS. A little surprising. Of course, you've seen her a lot more than I have, that she would show bunt with that runner in scoring position and already an out. One ball, no strikes to the Edward Waters left fielder. Here's the pitch from Young. Swung on and missed. Throw down to second. It's cut off by Young. Actually, my mistake. That was Patterson we were talking about earlier. She's on deck. One ball, one strike, one out. Here's the 1-1. One, one. But it's going to be foul. Just foul. Got it down in front, but the ball just backspun toward the plate. Strike two on Jemiah Holmes. Break for the Eagles. Holmes might have had that throw beaten. Boy, she really busted it down the line. Coach Regula 
Encarnacion comes out to have a discussion with the umpires. You know, the umpires will come together to talk. Not necessarily sure about what, because it certainly was a foul ball that would just be strike two. They don't tell us what they're talking about. We'd have to figure it out ourselves. Situation is a runner at second, one out, potential tying run in scoring position. And Coach Regulacion wants to continue the conversation. I'm wondering, are they questioned, did Holmes come out of the box? is going to bring both umpires together to have a lengthy discussion. As Ray mentioned, one ball, two strikes is the count now to Jemiah Holmes, pending this discussion here. Runner at second is Jade mentioned. One down here in the top of the fifth inning. Trinity Baptist with a 3-2 lead. And after all that, looks like as they say, all hearts and minds are settled. Nothing changed, and we're ready to resume. The one-two from Young is in the dirt. Going down to third is mentioned. No one's there. It rolled into left field. Luckily, the left fielder was there to keep mentioned there at third. So the tying run now goes over to third base. The count this, is now even at two balls and two strikes. This communication, someone needs to tell Morgan to hold that ball. Carlin Payne very alert in left. 2-2 pitch, swung on, and that one is going to be a dead ball. And the coming to score is going to be Jade Minchin. We're tied at three. And also on the play, nobody covering first. Wells was trying to get the throw off. A strikeout that results in the tying run scoring and the batter reaching first base. Drop third strike is going to tie things up. Regulacion is going to come out and is going to make a beeline toward the circle. So we are tied at three here. One out. Runner at first for Everett Waters. Regulacion gives his marching orders to his infielders. And Messiah Patterson is at the plate now for Edward Waters. Jade mentioned the courtesy runner paying off big dividends for Edward Waters getting two stolen bases. Coming home on that drop third strike to tie the contest up here at three. Messiah Patterson at the plate now for Edward Waters. Lady Tiger freshman center fielder, first pitch. But down over to Young. Runner's going to go to second. It's going to be an out there at first. That's so going to go down as a fielder's choice for Messiah Patterson. Two down, but... Jemiah Holmes moves into scoring position here for Edward Waters, and that's going to be, bring up the top of the order in Laura Scott. Well, that's going to be a sacrifice bunt because the runner did advance. And there are two outs. Taylor Foster covering. Eagles, a little trouble covering bases this inning. But Foster there. First pitch to Scott is upstairs for a ball. Definite speed on the base path there in the form of Jemiah Holmes. Tigers playing small ball this inning, and they got the tying run in. 1-0. That one catches the plate for a strike. And this all started with the leadoff walk, and statistically speaking, leadoff walks about a 70% chance of scoring. One ball, one strike, runner at second, two down here in the top of the fifth inning. 1-1, one, one. swung on and missed, throw down to third, is going to bounce away, here comes Holmes, Holmes coming to the plate, Splat at the plate, she is out! Out, oh, that is going to end the inning. Stolen base for Holmes, and then out 2-1 at the plate. And the side is retired as Josh, some unusual plays in this inning, but the Tigers do tie it up. And we go to the bottom of the fifth. It is 3-3. Three, three.
tied up at three here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. There is a shot out to center field. That is going to be Caitlin LeMug coming up to center. It came in as the Lady Tigers made some defensive changes in that half inning to make the play, make the catch. Morgan Wells at the dish there on the fly on the e, on the uh, F8 there for scoring at home. One down here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Tied up at three here, bottom of the fifth. A good one here on Jacksonville's west side. Taylor Foster up at the plate now. As the first pitch from Jojo Peterson misses outside. And there it goes. Caitlin the Mug robbing us of a hit again. <laughs> so the way I have it, the Mug batting in the number seven hole, if I have that correct. Maya Jordan has come out of the game. One attempt over to Minchin. Minchin throws over to first. That one's in time. As that was Chloe Sisson covering there at first. As Sisson moved from a third to first. I'm um, to third, third to second. And at the middle of the inning. She covers first base, gets the out, and they're quickly two down here in at the bottom of the fifth. Piper Young at the dish now here for Trinity Baptist. 3-3, three, three, swung on, hit, foul, back to the screen. It's going to hit the screen, bounce in front of Gracie Mejia. She'll throw over to Jojo Peterson. We'll do it again. Wells 0 for 1 today. Excuse me, that was Piper Young at the dish now for Trinity Baptist. Swung on, hit out to center. It's actually it's going to be caught. Nice job of getting into the field there by Chloe Sisson, and they quickly are three up and three down here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. We go to the sixth inning here on the west side. Edward Waters three, Trinity Baptist three. Batting in the sixth and a high pop up. Taylor Foster makes the catch in foul territory. Laura Scott, a bit of unlucky luck there for the Edward Waters designated players. That one just missed dropping in for a blue single, but Foster able to get there to make the catch. One down here, and that is going to bring up Katie Gooden. Gooden, one for two tonight here, two RBIs. Coming off of the first inning home run, two run shot on the left field wall. A bunt tip goes foul. Gooden, the senior from Jacksonville, played her high school softball over at Sandalwood. Was played her first two years here at Trinity Baptist. Before transferring prior to the start of last year to Edward Waters. Come set, here is the 0-1, and that's going to be a strike. All-speed pitch is in there for a strike. No balls, two strikes, one down here, top of the sixth inning, tied up at three. The 0-2 misses upstairs. One ball and two strikes. Edward Waters, three runs on two hits, no errors. For Trinity Baptist, three runs on three hits, also no errors. The one-two. Smith just misses outside. Count is even now at two balls and two strikes. Piper Young, since giving up that two-run shot too good and in the first inning, has really settled in. It's a tremendous softball in the circle for Trinity Baptist. 
2 2. This is upstairs. The count of goals full now. Three balls and two strikes. Three balls, two strikes. One out here, top of the six, tied up at three. Edward Waters rolled to a run rule victory in game one. The Eagles will come to play here in game two. Here's a 3 2. Then it takes a hack, hits that one foul back to the screen, and we'll do the full count 3 2 again to the Edward Water shortstop. You're listening to Josh Jackson, who's helping us out here. We got some issues we're going to work as Josh continues with the play-by-play. Young comes set. Here is the 3-2. Misses upstairs. There is ball four. There's the free pass there to Katie Gooden. Chloe Sisson at the dish now here for Edward Waters. Sisson moved from a third to second defensively. Bottom of the fifth. Yuma Tilla Tiger in at the dish now here for Ever Waters. First pitch to Young is going to be to Sisson as a strike. All right, Josh, I think we worked out our issues and we're all caught up with you now. Balls, one strike to the Everwater second baseman. Here's the 0-1 runner goes. That one's hit. Foul. That's going to come back towards here. That's going to bounce. Hit right in front of us. Everyone getting away from that one. The count goes now to no balls and two strikes. You know, I have my hat on. I was going to try to make the catch, but it's underneath my headphones. I wouldn't have gotten it off in time. Here is the 0-2. Runner goes. Swung on miss. Strike three. Runner goes down to second. That's going to be a stolen base for Katie Gooden. But they're two down as a result of the strikeout. Sisson goes down on strikes. Brooke Rice at the dish now for Edward Waters. Young comes set. Rice begins to dig in. Runner at second now for Edward Waters. First pitch to Rice is a strike coming inside. On the Everwaters junior catcher. She's over one, a fly out, and a walk. Here is the 0 1. Swung on and missed. Count quickly goes, no balls and two strikes. 3 3 in the sixth. Eagles took the lead, but then Edward Waters got that run in the fifth. Some strange plays, but we're tied at three. Here's the 0 2 swung on and hit up the middle for a base hit. Here comes Katie Gooden around third. The throw is not in time, and that is going to be an RBI single for Brooke Rice, and Edward Waters retakes the lead at 4 to 3. Good piece of hitting, just taking the ball right back where it came from, and Another walk has come in to score a total of five runs between the two teams. All five of them reached on the walk, not counting the home run from Gooden. First pitch to Kyla Gardner. Gardner turns on one. She sends one to left field. That one's gone. Kyla Gardner, her second home run of the day. A two-run shot this time over the left field wall. And Edward Waters extends the lead now to 6-3. to three. That one hit on a line over the left field wall. And a much-needed shot there for Kyla Gardner. Kyla Gardner has had herself one terrific day. I believe that is RBI's 7-8 and eight on the day. Home run number 5 on the season. And Trinity Baptist saw that lead disappear. And now trails by three. Jade Minchin at the dish now here for Edward Waters. Two run shot for Kyla Gardner. Then for Lady Tiger lead to three. First pitch is going to be low for a ball. And Piper Young. Minchin, the senior, fifth year senior from Tampa. The old one swung on and hit up, popped up. Baseman's going to call for it, makes the catch, and the side is retired. But Edward Waters fires back with three here in the top of the sixth inning to the home half of the sixth. Lady Tigers six, Eagles three.
Well, Edward Waters has come back to get four so far unanswered runs. TBC took the lead 3-2. Edward Waters tied it in the fifth and then regained the lead 6-3 in the sixth. And it'll be Butler, Medina, and Shaw for TBC in the bottom half. JoJo Peterson, five innings pitched so far, three runs there earned. She has allowed just a few hits. She has three and struck out two. If there's ever a person you want out of the plate here for Trinity Baptist, it's Sage Butler. She is definitely one that can really put one over the fence and really give this team a shot in the arm. Butler three for three with a homer in game one. So far, nothing out of two. Swung on, hit out to second. There's Sisson there to make the catch. There's quickly one down here and at the home half of the sixth. That ball just tailed right in and got the handle of the bat. Easy play. Ebony Medina, the shortstop for Trinity Baptist, had the dish now for the Eagles. 0 for 1 on the day with a walk. Does have a run scored and two stolen bases here this evening in game two. First pitch to Medina is upstairs for a ball. Peterson so far has faced 17, five and a third innings pitched. Has three runs, all of them earned. Three hits, uh, giving up three hits and a struck out two. Also has three walks. Two balls, no strikes here to the Trinity Baptist shortstop in Ebony Medina. There's the 2 0 swung on and missed. Now it goes to two balls and a strike. Again, as Ray mentioned, Edward Waters will hit the road this weekend up to Atlanta to take our three-game set against Clark Atlanta. Very important SIC East Division Series. The 2-1 comes to inside, gets the corner for a strike. Two balls and two strikes. JoJo Peterson looks like she's on a mission to make sure TBC does not come back. She is throwing just as hard now as she did earlier in the ball game. 2-2 pitch in the dirt as Rice tried to frame that one low. Count goes full to three balls and two strikes. One down here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Edward Waters leading 6-3. to three. A three-run top of the sixth, giving Edward Waters the lead once again. And the 3-2 misses upstairs. In the count. And there's Ebony Medina at first as a result of a walk. Number four issued by Peterson. The other three all came in to score. And Ashley Shaw has twice today flying out to the warning track. Last time she popped it up to the catcher. She's had some really good swings today, but nothing to show for it. So Shaw steps in, the TBC center fielder. First pitch from Peterson. This is upstairs for a ball. Nina does have two stolen bases here. And in this game, too, would not be surprised to see her go on the move at any time here. Squaring the butt. Here's the 1 0. Throwing down to second. And they are going to get Medina. That's that. the seventh time that Brooke Rice has thrown someone out this season. You got and two six CS if you're scoring at home, and there's a quick, a critical second out here for Edward Waters. And that was a missile fired by Brooke Rice, right on target in plenty of time. Two zero was popped up foul behind us. Now it goes to two balls and a strike. It'll be the bottom third for the Tigers, due up in the seventh. Two balls, one strike, two down here, bottom of the sixth. Edward Waters leading six to three. The two one swung on, hit out to center. Lamug is going to watch that one fly away. Well, we told you Ashley Shaw has come close a few times. This time she got it over the fence. The big blow by Ashley Shaw, her first of the season. It's still a two run lead, however, for the Tigers. RBI number six for Ashley Shaw. Trinity Baptist just will not go away. They are going to fight to the end. A solo shot from Ashley Shaw makes this now a two-run ball game. And bring up Carlin Payne with two outs and the bases empty. Now 
Payne one for one on the day with a double. And a run score and also has a walk here in game two. Peterson gets her sign, comes at first pitch to Payne, is going to be a strike. Right down the heart of the plate, four strike, no balls, one strike to the Trinity Baptist left fielder in Carlin Payne. The fifth homer allowed this season by Peterson, and the first hit by Ashley Shaw. The 0-1, swung on, chopped out to second. Sissing has time, it's an underhand toss over to Mejia, and that is going to be the final out. But a solo shot from Ashley Shaw keeps the Eagles in it. We go to the seventh inning. Edward Water, six, Trinity Baptist, four. Bottom of the order due up here for Edward Waters. That's Mejia, Saunders, and Lama. Grayson Mejia at the dish now for Edward Waters. The senior first baseman from Arizona. First pitch from Young is low for a ball. Ashley Shaw with a solo shot in the bottom of the six, keeping the Eagles in it. A two-run ball game here. See if Edward Waters can try to get some insurance here. The 1-0. This is downstairs. Count goes down to two balls and no strikes. Shawcon said, here's the 2-0. That one misses downstairs again. It's now three balls and no strikes. Time is called. As the Trinity Baptist catcher, and Morgan Wells goes out to have a bit of a chat with Piper Young. Edward Waters, six runs on four hits, no errors. Trinity Baptist, four, four, and zero. The 3-0 to Mejia, that one misses upstairs, and there's a leadoff walk. Those leadoff walks have come back to hurt both pitchers, resulting in runs. Kayla Saunders at the dish now for Edward Waters. It is a bunt. It's a nice one. It's going to allow the runner to move up to second. And the sacrifice there for Kayla Saunders. As Mejia moves up to second. One down. Kayla on the mug at the dish now for Edward Waters. The mug with senior center fielder from right here in Jacksonville. She played her high school softball over at Oakleaf High School out in Clay County. First pitch to the mug just misses the third base back for a foul. And coach Bryant, excuse me, assistant coach Brian Daly having a bit of fun there with Caitlin the mug. Uh, we saw Coach Regulacion have to take a nosedive at a ball hit at him <laughs> in game number one. Third base coaches, they might want to grab the umpires and catchers' gears. Absolutely. Here's the 0-1. That one misses low. Jets gets away from Wells, but it's not too far enough for it to allow Mejia to advance to third. Count is now a ball and a strike. One ball, one strike, one down here, and at the top of the seventh inning, Edward Waters leading 6-4. to four. The 1-1. One, one. Swung on, it's going to be popped up. Third baseman's got a bait on it, makes the catch, and they're two down here. Or one down here, yeah, two down here, and at the top of the seventh. Another one that got in off the handle of the mug. Kylie Duhigg was there to make the play, and she checked to make sure the runner wasn't too far off. And now top of the order, Laura Scott. Edward 
Waters designated player at the dish from for Edward Waters. First pitch to Scott. It's going to be a strike. Due up for the Eagles will be Magatha, Duhig, and Wells. And Young trying to keep it a two-run game and give her team a chance in the bottom of the seventh. Young comes set. The 0-1. Miss is upstairs. It's going to allow Mejia to move over to third. Ill-advised throw there by Wells. She had no chance. That ball almost got away to let another run in. That'll be a wild pitch. One ball, one strike, two down here at the top of the seventh. There's the 1-1 one, one pitch to Scott. That one misses upstairs. Count goes now to two balls and a strike. Young comes set. Here's the 2-1. That one just misses inside. It's now three balls and a strike. Call to the chagrin of this Trinity Baptist crowd. I thought that caught the inside of the plate. The 3 1 from Young. This is outside, and their runners on the corners now here for Edward Waters. That's and a block number three by Young. Katie Gooden has had a pretty good game. Home run, a walk, a stolen base, and two runs scored. and can provide some insurance here for Edward Waters. First pitch to Gooden. Inside, Arquette does catch the top of the zone for a strike. As Scott moves up to second. So there are our runners at second and third here for Katie Gooden now with an 0-1 count. The 0-1 swung on, and that's going to be hit foul, and now... No balls and two strikes here. No balls, two strikes to the Edward Waters senior shortstop. And Katie Gooden. Deal two. And it just misses inside. Now it goes now to a ball and two strikes. Laura Scott at second. Got on our result of a walk. As did Gracie Mejia. The one, two, swung on and just hit foul down the third base line. Ryan Daly having to do a bit of a dance to slide out of that one, out of the way of that one. We'll do the one, two all over again. Josh, you might want to invest in some shin guards may for your coaches. To. May indeed have to. See if the soccer team can let you borrow some. The one, two, this is upstairs. Count is even now two balls and two strikes. Deuce is wild here. Two balls, two strikes, two out, two runners on the base paths there for Edward Waters. First base is open, so if ball four happens, there are worse things. 2-2 two, two misses low, count now goes full at three balls and two strikes. Young comes set, set to deliver the 3-2 pitch. That one is swung on, hit out to center field. Center field of Camp Thunder, it makes the catch, and the Tigers are retired. Lady Tigers get two walks, but leave two stranded as we go to the home half of the seventh inning. Trinity bat this down two. It is six to four. Bottom of the seventh, Eagles coming to bat, trailing by two, six to four. Edward Waters got two in the first. Trinity Baptist came back with one in the bottom half. Stayed that way for quite a while until TBC took a 3-2 lead in the fourth. Tigers tied it up in the fifth, then got three in the sixth, 
And Trinity Baptist got the home run from Shaw in the bottom of the sixth. Tigers threatened in the seventh but did not score. And here is Ellery Magatha who had the two-run triple. That momentarily gave Trinity the lead. Peterson's first pitch popped up and out of play. I want to thank Josh for joining us here on the broadcast, helping us out when Sam and I really needed to uh, do some work on the stats computer. So, Josh, really appreciate your help. In the words of Dion Warwick, that's what friends are for, my friend. That's great. He and I, we always help each other when necessary. Here's a one-strike pitch, a good swing, and this one is fouled straight back. Piper Young's had a pretty good game. The Tigers started to get to her a little bit late in the game. Some unusual plays, some defensive mistakes, mental mistakes by the Eagles helped Edward Waters regain the lead. But as Josh said a little while ago, Trinity Baptist fighting, and they're not giving up. Two-strike pitch, a ground ball towards third. It is cut off, and the throw to first. It is in time and dug out. A great play at first base for the out. What a play there by Jade Minchin. Able to get down, get dirty, get what she needed to get enough over to throw over to first to Gracie Mejia. And a great scoop by Gracie over at first to get the out. Gracie Mejia playing first base. And it brings up Kylie Duhig. Jade Minchin made a good diving play. And then the scoop on the other side. Duhigg pops this one up, stays on the infield, and the ball's on the ground. A big break for the Eagles. Looked like Sisson may have lost that one in the lights. The mug trying to help out but couldn't quite get there in time. That'll be what they call a Texas leaguer single for Duhigg. Can't really fault the fielder when she can't see the ball. That's twice Duhigg has caught a break on a blooper. But she's two for three, and Morgan Wells representing the tying run at the plate. First pitch, misses up and away. It kind of looked like a pitch out. Trying to see if Duhigg would take off. Don't want to risk getting that runner caught off when you got the tying run at the plate. Wells swings the bat very well. She has homered this year. One ball, no strikes, and this pitch misses outside. Duhigg almost missed getting back to the bag. She tried to dive back in, and she not granted time. She has to kind of walk her way back up. She hit the ground and kind of stuck there and had to take a second chance and just got in under the tag of Gracie Mejia. Two balls, no strikes. Swing and a miss by Wells, and she, Josh, I think she was trying to tie the game on yeah, that one. That was a huge cut there by Wells. Two balls and a strike. Coming up on 9 p.m. That one's drilled to right, but it's going to be caught. Line drive at Kyla Gardner, and there are two away. The Eagles down to their final out. Taylor Foster, last hope for TBC. Josh, we've seen a pretty good ball game here in the nightcap. Oh, absolutely. After a run rule there for Edward Waters in the first uh, contest, we've really seen this Trinity Baptist squad really fight to stay in this contest, and this one's not over. Foster taps the first pitch foul. If she can reach, Piper Young would get a chance. And we know Piper wants to swing the bat one more time. No balls and a strike. And Peterson ready. Here's the one strike pitch. And that one is inside. One ball, one strike. Foster trying to get on. She's the potential tying run. There are two outs. Duhig at first. Peterson the 1-1. One -one. That one's in the dirt and a good block by Rice. They're not too worried about that runner at first. She's not the one that can do the damage. They just have to get this final out. 
Counts two and one. Foster digs in. Peterson checks the sign. She's ready. Here's the pitch. High pop up, and this one will get out of play. And Eagles down to their final strike. Two balls, two strikes. Duhigg back at first. And Foster again trying to keep this inning alive and give Young a chance to swing the bat. Here's a 2-2. And she chases one up and out of the zone and fouls it off. Ball had a little bit of rise to it. Foster didn't want to take strike three, and she was fortunate to get a piece of it. Two balls, two strikes. And here comes a pitch from Peterson. Check, swing, got her on a beautiful changeup, and that's the ball game. Final score, Edward Waters University, six, Trinity Baptist College, four, an excellent game played by both teams, a couple of mistakes by TBC, and you get a team like Edward Waters, they will take advantage, and Josh, that's win number 30 for your Tigers. Yeah, that's the fourth straight year for Edward Waters with at least 30 wins or more in a season. So this Edward Waters squad just finding a way to get the job done. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight and the final home game for Trinity Baptist College. We want to thank everybody for joining us here on the TBC Eagles Sports Network. Thank you once again to my good friend Josh Jackson for joining us and filling in when we needed to. We had some issues just a little while ago. We still have some baseball action here this Friday and Saturday. TBC is at home against Atlantis University. All three games here for you on the TBC Eagles Sports Network. And in case you haven't heard yet, we've added three games against South Region rival Bob Jones University next weekend, April 19th and 20th at home. Well, Josh, appreciate you joining us here tonight. We always appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to share a mic with you, my friend, and uh, best luck to you and the Eagles the rest of the season. Now that you're done playing with us, we'll wish you the best of luck and hope you win that conference championship. Yes, indeed. Josh Jackson, the Sports Information Director and Announcer for Edward Waters University. For Coach Ray Regulacion and Athletic Director John D. Jones, I'm Ray Bureau saying good night and God bless you from Trinity Baptist College. <laughs>